Welcome back to Switch Corner. It's time to take a look at what's coming up for the Nintendo Switch in the next week. And if it's a, you know, spend your cash kind of week or a, yeah, save it and keep far, far away. I don't look at every game here. You know, this is more about me picking out some of my favorites, you know, those that caught my eye. And I basically break down what I could find out. So what can we expect? Initial impressions are the refuse on any other consoles and try to determine is it a day one buy or a wait for a review. Spoiler alert though here I gotta say this week is looking pretty damn good to me. With that though hit subscribe if you love the switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So starting things off it couldn't be any stronger, this is my top pick of the week, the masterpiece that is Catherine Full Body. It's joining the Switch coming from Atlas. If you are a fan of Atlas I urge you to add this one to your library, especially if you haven't played it before. Releasing originally back in like 2011 for like the PS3, the Xbox, it's gained a cult like status and rightly so. I would confidently say this is one of my favourite games of all time. While I don't want to give anything away it combines a deep story about one man's like love life and the betrayals he makes while incorporating like creepy puzzle game elements where you'll be climbing deadly towers surrounded by sheep. This full body edition it brings along the original content though adds in a whole new kind of storyline and a whole lot more puzzling. This version also adds in some persona content for fans out there. It's a masterpiece that I own on the Xbox 360, PS3, PS Vita, PS4 and I'll now be adding it to the Switch library too buy it immediately. So next up then, Super Liminal, another puzzle game to kind of melt your brain here. This one it's playing with the idea of like optical illusions and forced perspectives. And from the trailer it looks like it will have me screaming at my screen while providing no doubt like that level of satisfaction you only feel when you solve something you know truly challenging in a puzzle game. Very few of the genres can kind of offer that satisfaction. It's been out on the PS4 though, Xbox and Windows and from what I understand, reviews seem solid with it floating typically between like that 7 to 8 range. And I'm down for this one. I don't know if it will be the next portal as the trailer touts, but it's for sure an interesting concept that I'm willing to spend some time with. It's launching also then with a day one discount too, which I always appreciate. But I will say this one can be finished in maybe a couple of hours. So work out if you can justify that cost to, you know, the runtime you're going to get. So next up then we've got Elden Path of the Forgotten. I don't know a whole lot about this one honestly, but for me this is a visual style that always gets me curious. Basically it reminds me of Hyperlight Drifter and that's enough to make me sit up and take notice. Shallow, I know, but I'm just being honest with you. This one you're on a mission across a desolate land to save your mother from ancient horrors that take inspiration from Lovecraft. On paper it sounds good to me honestly, it sounds actually badass. But how it actually plays is anyone's guess. There's a few like demo reviews on PC out there, but that's really about it. Even the devs here, I can't really comment on them. It seems to be their first game, so I am hopeful. Good luck to them. I'll be waiting on reviews with this one, but it may well be worth a look. Deck 13 games now they're bringing us cross code for the Nintendo Switch and this one it's a throwback RPG with 16 bit SNES style graphics with a lengthy campaign offering anywhere from like 30 to 80 hours though a huge world to explore over 100 enemies, 7 dungeons, over 100 quests, skills to develop and a stunning soundtrack that is a lot to be interested in. The final thing to sell me on this one though the science fiction storyline I'm a big fan of the genre also gotta say there's a lot of good reviews out there already for previous releases this has been on other consoles before and it's pretty highly regarded. If you're an RPG fan it could easily be a day one buy. That said, not giving up too much with this one, I jumped straight into this after spending 100 hours with Trails of Cold Steel 3 for my review on that one and this video should be dropping actually in the next couple of days. So Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 and this came out of nowhere, they were just like boom. Here is our announcement, we're releasing Curse of the Moon 2 and it's going to drop in like two weeks, enjoy. I will absolutely take that. For those out there expecting Ritual of the Night visuals though, you're very much out of luck. This is the sequel to the, in my opinion, much stronger entry for Bloodstained. For those that haven't played Bloodstained though, it's basically a Castlevania inspired adventure, meaning it is basically Castlevania. The original was great though and I anticipate we're going to get more of the same here. Here we're going to be taking on the role of a swordsman though by the name of Sangetsu, battling his way to a demonic stronghold. Easy day one by this one for me and I can't wait to jump back into this world of bloodstains. 
So a couple games now that did catch my eye, but I'd be a little wary just because of run time, but that is The Great Perhaps and Creepy Tale. I originally had them for this list because visually they looked really special to me, but having done some digging now, just know that reviews for both of them are very much average, and the runtime on YouTube, I found a video with The Great Perhaps being finished up in like 28 minutes, and then The Great Perhaps a little over an hour. I'm not saying they're bad, I obviously haven't played them myself personally, but I think we will see them on sale very soon, so I'm not sure I could go in personally with a day one purchase on those particular games, especially with the refuse then floating around, I'd say the average like five to six out of 10 mark. So last up for the week then, probably my second top pick of the week behind Catherine, but deadly premonition to a blessing in disguise. If Catherine was somewhat a cult game, Deadly Premonition was pretty much the king of cult, loved by so many but hated by so many in equal measure. The idea was really simple, a 3D horror person survival that had janky controls, janky visuals, and I'm quite honestly surprised it ran at times, but you know what, I absolutely adored it. I cannot wait for this sequel as it brings a Resident Evil meets Twin Peaks vibe and tell me that does not sound amazing. What this will deliver though is what mainly has me curious, is it going to be kind of more of the same are they just trying to appeal to that core fan base or are they actually trying to like convert those that hated the original and now working to evolve this series and bringing something along that can you know let's say be universally appreciated I guess time will tell that one and we're like what seven days away now but I know one thing I'm gonna be a day one player with this one and I cannot wait to go on this adventure with Agent York as he visits La Car, a small town in New Orleans with a mysterious serial killer on the loose. It sounds amazing to me, honestly, but if I was you, I would suggest watching more than one review. I think this one is absolutely gonna split audiences, and I'm hoping those that do review the game are gonna kinda tell you if they love the original or hated the original, because it's gonna be very hard to judge really where opinion falls. So before I do wrap up this video, then I will say in the UK, you can also expect Farm Simulator, Story of Seasons, Friends and Mineral Town, and then Fried Terrarium. They are both dropping in the UK on the 10th, so the Friday, and I think the AU too. These though, they don't hit the US until the 14th, so I'm actually gonna throw them in next week's breakdown because that's gonna release on the 14th as well. Both games though, I'll give you a hint, I can't wait for either of them, and Fried Terrarium, I will for sure have a review live in the next week, probably a couple of days before the game actually drops. With that though, I was hoping for a break for the old bank account, but this week is not that week, sadly. There's some seriously impressive titles coming. Is this the same for you, or are you going to be saving your cash this week? Let me know in the comments below what you're going to be spending your money on, if basically anything. Finally, I just want to do a quick shout out now to the Patreons of the channel. Having launched it only a week ago, we now have six. We added another one since our last video just yesterday. So thank you so much for that extra support. It means the absolute world to me and it really does honestly make a difference. If you want to check that out for yourself too, I have linked it in the description below. But yeah, anyway, big week ahead. Let me know what you're going to be spending or saving your cash on. Hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.